All right, so custom UI time, and this time we're just gonna right customize the UI to basically whatever we want, right? Whatever we want to do. So quickly, what you want to do here? So these dividers, you can actually move them, and then you can click and then drag any of these menus to dock them, right? And this will just dock them, which will just make them easier to use, especially when you're customizing your menus, right? And you can click on these little arrows here, and that will and that will undock them, right? So if you do that by mistake again, tool, click and drag, and that will dock that. Okay, so let's say you're working on these brushes, and by the way, if you click on these brushes and click on something else, that'll replace that, right, which sucks. If you want to get it back, all you have to do is go back to Preferences, and then Restore Custom UI, and that will just restore everything to the way you saved your custom UI, right? That's pretty useful. So in this case, I'm going to go to Preferences, and I'm going to Restore, or Config, Restore Standard UI, right? So now we're all on the same page here. This is the UI. Again, if you didn't customize it, this is what it should look like. So now we want to customize this, right, move things around, right, and just kind of get a feel for what we want. So let's go over to Preferences, Config, and let's go over to Enable Customize. This will enable us to customize our menus however we want. So let's click on that, right, and I'll notice that the menus open up here, or the palettes rather, so now we can stick things in these areas if we want. So let's go ahead and do that. So in order to customize your menu, all you have to do is just click Control, Alt, click and drag. So we can drag this to here, for example, right? Again, we can drag this and this. Again, Control alt click and drag so we can move things around, right? So if you want this here, for example, and gradient, we don't need. If you don't need something, you can Control alt click and drag into the document, and it will delete that, okay? So same thing with all these pieces. I don't actually need them, right? Because you can hold on spacebar, and those menus are over here, so you don't actually need them there. And this menu is here as well, so you definitely don't need this menu here. But if you wanted a menu down here, that's how you do that, okay? So that's pretty useful, and let's go to brush, click and drag to dock this here. Now we've got all our brushes here, we don't have all of them, we just have the ones that we've been using. So control alt click and drag, so maybe we want clay, we want clay build up. Clay is like clay build up by the way, but just a different version, so if you want to use that instead of clay build up, you can. Uh, so in plate, control alt click and drag, right, you get the point. And again, if you don't want it, just control alt click and drag into the document, and that'll delete it. Not from the, the program, it'll just delete it from your menu, right? So you don't have to worry about that. And so that's pretty useful. And if you see a brush, and you're like, okay, I don't have the brush that I want here. I want to use, let's say, damn standard, maybe. I don't see it there. So you can just press B, D, and then S. Okay, and then the damn standard will pop, pop up here, right? So it's there. Let's go back here, and then we've got damn standard, so we can control alt click and drag. So this is basically your brush history menu. So it's your brush menu and your brush history menu. So whatever you use will be here. So again, control alt click and drag. And this is the brushes that I use here, right? So this leg rack rectangle and the Z modeler, right? And anyway, you get the point, right? So you can just do that. And once you're done, right, finicking around and moving things around and yeah, the brushes that I don't use, by the way, I don't use the home page, so you can definitely drag that out if you want. But that's where it is, and I don't know where it is uh, on the menu, so maybe don't drag that out, just in case. So once you're done, right, messing around there, you can go to Preferences, you can get out of Enable Customize, and this is now what your menu will look like when you open up ZBrush. But you need to save that, so we can go to Save UI, right, that'll save that out for us, that's great. And then also important, you want to go to Store Configuration. This will store everything, including your UI and your shortcuts, which is definitely what you want. So click on that. I'm not going to do that because I don't want this UI. This is a terrible UI, right? So I'm just going to click on that, and you can store that, right? And again, to get into full screen mode, you can press Tab. That's not my shortcut. That's just a universal shortcut, which you can use as well. So Tab. Okay, so that's that. And... Uh, next, we'll go into floating menus, right, which is how I create my menus, uh, or rather my custom menus. But before we do that, let's go again to Preferences, and if you want to change the color of this document, actually, let's go over the document and the range here. That controls the gradient, okay? So if you want that gradient, you can either do this, right, or pull it all the way back. So I keep the range just a little bit, so about there somewhere. There's a slight range on mine. So document, range. If you want to change the background color, all you have to do is click on this, this second color swatch, Click on that and then select the color you want. So maybe like a pinkish background there. So that's the color. We go back to document, click on back, and that will change the background color, okay? Which is pretty useful. If you maybe want to take a screenshot with a model and a special color background, you can definitely do that. Okay, so that's pretty useful. Another thing you can do under document is change the document size. So if I zoom out here, by the way, this is your document size, right? So zooming, you can just uh, click and drag on this zoom button, right? 
uh, you can go get a document and change the document size. So right now I've got like a 2K document basically. But if you want to change that, you can uncheck this pro and then change that to something like 520, oh, sorry, 512 by 512, right like that. And then you can press resize, just press yes. Okay, and then press control N and then you can click and drag this out and then press edit. Okay, and if you don't want that color on that, we can just switch that to white. So that's how we change the document size. Okay, so that's pretty useful. And then one more thing under, so let's again select another color. So let's say like a pinkish red, maybe. So there, right, so we've got that. Next we go to preferences, we can go to eye colors. There's a bunch of colors here. I wouldn't really mess with a lot of them, right? I usually mess with the SW1, SW2, K1 and K2. So now I'm just gonna click on them, right? And you'll now notice that these colors, right? That's how you change the color of your UI, by the way it takes this color here. So if I change this to green, right, I go back to preferences, eye colors, eye colors, right? And I change those ones, which is the one that I use. So these ones, right? This is my menu, right? My my colors. I again, you can change like everything here, which is a lot. And I wouldn't recommend doing that because there's no need. There honestly isn't, right? You just want to see all of this and that's it. And again, if you wanted to, you can go to preferences and see what each one does but I wouldn't recommend it. It's just too many. It's way too many. So yeah, I, I think you go mad doing that. So SW1 and 2 and K1 and 2 and that's it. So again, select this on the second swatch here. Okay, which is the main color, by the way, this is your secondary color and your main color is on the on the right, which is a bit weird because we read from left to right. But anyway, so main color is here, secondary color is here. So again, select that, select this, preferences, eye colors, and then SW1 and 2 and K1 and 2 as well. This is actually pretty good. I like this UI. And yeah, very simple, right? Nothing over the top. And you can change pretty much everything, but there is no need to do that. After you're done, after you're done uh, messing around, right? Changing your UI, changing the colors, you go to preferences, save the UI, and then store configuration, very important, so that next time you load up ZBrush, it will load as your custom UI, right? So I'm gonna re restore my custom UI. And it doesn't change the document size, by the way. Uh, that, that that you'll have to change on your own again change it to any number you want right and then go to resize yes okay and then drag that out press ctrl n okay zoom drag that out and then edit okay and now we can use it okay and of course to change that background which is unfortunate we can go to our color all right so something like that and then document and then back and that will change that and now we can just go back there. Okay, so that is. Okay, so next I'm gonna show you guys how to create the custom floating menus that I use, and you can have a look at that as well. So use that if you want, and also create your own custom one. So that's just the custom menu, and next we'll deal with the floating menus up next. All right, so here we are onto our next menu, and this is the custom floating menu, which we want. So let's just open up this divider, and let's just close anything here, right, that we don't need. And even the tool menu, we can close that. Okay, so next I'm gonna go to preferences, drag and drop this here. Just so it's easy to work with, right? Because every time you use it and it does that, right? Which can be kind of an annoying to use. So let's go to config and then enable customize, right? Which we do to customize our menus, right? And then next we're going to go to custom UI. Okay. And then we can create a new menu. We can click on that and then let's call it something. And remember it works according to the alphabets. So depending on where you want it on this menu up here, right? So A, B, and then right Z is obviously last. Help is there because obviously you need help with something. So you want to find it really quickly, but uh, let's just name it something like Z, okay, and then custom menu. Okay, so Z custom, right, for example, then you can press enter, and now you'll notice it's here, okay, and it'll move once we enable customize, or get out of enable customize. But for now, I want to open that, okay, or click on it, and then move it here to the side, okay, so now we can customize this menu. So in our custom UI, we want to control, alt, click and drag the custom sub palette, okay, so click it and then drop it to the top of this menu. Okay, so let go of that. And now we can add things to this. So let's go to our brush menu, for example, let's drag and drop that here. Right, and now we can control click and drag and now we can add elements to this UI, right? So we can click and drag it like that, right? And then let's say, for example, we want to add other things. So we want to add a spacer, for example, right? So we're going to control alt click and drag. The spacer is just a blank space, by the way, so you don't actually see it right there. So that's fine. And next, let's add another menu here. Okay, and then you want to drop it to the top again 
of the main menu. So you got Z custom menu and then untitled. So we want to drop it to the top there. Okay, so another untitled menu. And let's say we want our, let's go for tool this time. Click and drag that there. Okay, let's go to sub tool or geometry actually. And none of these options are showing up here because I need to make this a poly mesh 3D. So now we've got all these options here as well. Right, so if those options don't show up, it's because you didn't make it a poly mesh 3D. Poly mesh 3D is something that you can work on and the, the default things you can't work on, by the way, in case you want to know the difference. Okay, the things that I use a lot would be geometry and then, right, so lower resolution is something that I use. You can drop that there, high resolution. Okay, if I were to divide this with control D, you can see we now have subdivisions. So subdivisions is also something that I use. And of course, you can take this whole menu there as well. So again, we can go back to preferences, click a new menu, alt, control, click and drag. Again, to the top, do not place it at the bottom here. Right, place it on the top, it'll place it there automatically. Okay, we'll go to tool and then we'll go to geometry and let's see what else do I use. Let's go to deformation maybe. And maybe we'll use a few of these. This is just for example, I don't actually use offset too much. I do use polish, right? And anyway, you get the point, right? You can just click and drag, alt click and drag. However many you want, you can add spaces. And let me just put this one here below the spacer so you see how it works. So below the spacer like that. Okay, so now that you're done, you want to rename these menus, right, for a little bit of organization. So Alt, Control, Alt, click on this, and now we can name this, right? So we'll call this one Brushes, for example. Okay, and or b tushes <laughs> right? Control, Alt, click on this one, and you can give this a name, right? And I am completely mistyping everything. Anyway, you should get the point, right? So something like that. And this makes absolutely zero sense. But after you're done, you can close all these menus, right, including this one. Right, and then of course preferences, enable customize, we can get out of that. And now we can store the configuration and then save the UI, which is what you want to do. I'm not going to click on that because I don't want to store any of this. Okay, but here it is, our Z custom menu. So now how do we assign a hotkey to this? Well, that's pretty easy. Just control, alt, click on that. Then we can assign a hotkey like alt, Z, for example. Now it's saying assign successfully. Okay, now we can press alt, Z. And now here is our custom menu, right, which we can now use. So we can use a clay brush on this. Right, we can use the clay buildup, we can use the, I don't know why I have clay twice, but anyway, the standard brush, right, so you get the point there. And here you can see that spacer, right, it's not the green color here, the green color is there just to show you that it's something, right, and then you've got the polish by groups, and then of course the different names that we have here. You can also shift click on these names here to just minimize them in case you've got too many menus, right, and that is just how you work with that. So that's just how you make custom floating menus, which is how I made my custom menu two and three, right? Obviously a little bit more organization here, right? And yeah, so that is pretty much it for custom menus. And again, once you're done, don't forget to go into preferences, okay? Store configuration and then save the UI out just so you can load it again if you want. Okay, and that is it for ZBrush custom menus. Uh, like it if you liked it, dislike it. If you didn't, let me know what you guys thought about it in the comments section. And if you really like my content, you can definitely subscribe. And I will see you guys in the next couple of videos. And actually, I am starting a new series, so you, a new beginner series for ZBrush. So you guys can definitely check that one out. It'll be up in the next week, maybe or so. So you guys can definitely check that one out as well.